Hi, welcome once again on my scientific blog, Discover Social Sciences, paired with this video channel on YouTube under the, the general heading of Discover Social Sciences as well. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Krzysztof Waśniewski. I am assistant professor at the, uh, the Andrzej Frycz Modrzewski University in Kraków in, at the Faculty of Management. Uh, and uh, in this update, uh, I want to talk about uh, investment strategies in the stock market. Those of you who have been following a little bit uh, the blog of mine, you know that since February I am using that blog in order to like reinvent or to coin up a good investment strategy for myself. Uh, essentially, for me, it is a comeback uh, to, to investing in the stock market, a comeback for a little bit more than three years of, inactivi of, uh, of inactivity. And over the last few months, I have been learning like the hard way because just a few weeks after I decided to put some of my savings in the stock market, uh, the whole coronavirus crisis started. So I have been riding those waves. It has been all a little bit bumpy. Some of those waves uh, brought me interesting returns. For example, I successfully rode the wave of uh, that sudden speculative bubble in the Polish stock market, the bubble that grew on uh, on biotech companies. And I managed to, to have quite a nice gain on, on, on those ones. Uh, anyway, and now, uh, in this update, I am going to present another analytical tool, uh, which is based on the general concept of the rate of return. It is an analytical tool we, which could be, thought of a better description, uh, uh, labeled as extrapolated rate of return. Before I go further, the same remark as I uh, make usually in those videos, Below the video in the description box, you can find the link discoversocialsciences.com. When you click on the link, it uh, leads you to the website of my blog, Discover Social Sciences. And uh, on that website, you will find a written update, like a plain full text update which has the same title as this video. So these two go together. In the video, you have my oral shorter presentation of the matters, which I present more in detail uh, in that written form. So I go, uh, I go forward. I want to explain what I am talking about. And as I love using uh, examples coming from real life, I will start with an example. The example is, uh, you can see it in the graph, uh, which is uh, on my side. And uh, it is the graph of, uh, which corresponds to the price of uh, First Solar. First Solar is an, a US-based American company specialized in the photovoltaic. In the past, I used to hold an investment position in the First Solar. But there came a moment, it was at the verge of March and a April this year, when I didn't really understand the rules of the game uh, in, uh, in the American stock market. So I withdrew all my money from there. I sold my position in the first solar and I, uh, and I essentially transferred all the money back to Poland. Uh, uh, so first solar is something that I used to invest in. It is a company that I have been observing for quite a few years now, because scientifically one of my interests uh, is uh, the field of renewable energies and the business of renewable energies. First solar is active in the photovoltaic, in the solar business. Uh, now, what does this graph uh, represent? I take the the prices, the stock prices of First Solar over the last year, over the last 12 months. And uh, on that graph, you have that stock price of First Solar reported over all the trading sessions during the last 12 months. But that price is taken in a specific way. It is taken as a rate of return uh, 
that I would have if I bought the shares of First Solar last Friday, so a April the 24th. So it is as if you had, as if you were uh, watching a story that plays backwards. So the beginning of the story is at the end, at the right end of the graph. It is a a April 24th, so essentially last Friday. And now I assume that it is an, a little bit an artificial assumption, yet it is frequently used in probabilities uh, or in the computation of probabilities, especially in that most classical form that comes from Abraham de Moivre from, from the mid 18th century. So I assume that what is likely to play out in the future will be some kind of recurrence from the past. I assume that there is some kind of cycle of recurrent cycle playing out in the stock market uh, with respect to that, to, to that specific stock. So when I ask myself, okay, if I had bought the shares of First Solar on April the 24th, so last Friday, what would be the most likely development in the future? What would be the likelihood that I would earn money on that? And uh, I assume that that likelihood is given by an extrapolation of the past. And here you can see that extrapolation of the past. My every past price of first solar is assumed to be something that can happen in the future, during the year to come, if I had bought those shares on Friday, uh, April 24th. And you can see that the story that is being told is that uh, most likely if I had bought those shares, which I didn't do, because I didn't have cash on that international investment account. If I had bought those shares on Friday, I would most likely earn like really good money over the year to come with that assumption that history repeats itself in the stock market, that there is a cycle. Now another example, that of Medtronic. Medtronic is a company which is sort of much in vogue now because they manufacture uh, globally and distribute globally medical equipment. Uh, inclusive of medical ventilators. So they are on, a, on, 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 let's say, a rising tide right now. The graph that you can see here is uh, made according to the same assumptions that I made for first solar. I assume that I could have purchased the stock of Medtronic on Friday, April 24th, and that the likelihood I earn anything on that stock, I make any profit, that likelihood is mostly based on what happened over the whole last year of trading in the shares of Medtronic. So I essentially assume that the story likely to repeat itself is the story from, uh, from, uh, from last year. And here in the graph you can see that story. So you can see that uh, there were like two big slumps on two extremities of the graph and in the middle there was a nice positive area of positive gains. So once again this graph shows all the past stock prices of Medtronic from the last year shown as a rate of return on the price from Friday, April 24th, last Friday. And to show you that uh, those stories can be quite contrasting, I will show you the same graph for a company which is like a little brother or a little cousin uh, to Medtronic. Why is Medtronic is a giant uh, whose balance sheet is counted in billions of dollars. Uh, here you have Airway Medics. It is a Polish-Israeli company. Uh, which essentially makes technologies for medical ventilators. As far as I know, their, uh, their core business is making tubes for uh, medical ventilators and they have a special technology so as uh, to assure sterility of those tubes. Uh, they lay, uh, they're, uh, they're like uh, septic safety for a long time. Anyway, here you have the, essentially the same business, just smaller. 
and a very different story in terms of the rate of OAuth return. This time, uh, just uh, one remark. This time, I am uh, pitching uh, those past prices against a real opening price I have in Airway Medics because I, I currently hold an investment position in Airway Medics. And uh, what uh, and, uh, so the basic price that I use as let's say as the baseline for calculating those rates of return is the opening price I really have on that position. By the way, Airway Medics was one of those companies or is one of those companies that I made uh, quite a good business on with that spe uh, when that speculative bubble on the whole biotech and medical uh, had been swelling in the Polish stock market. If I remember, I made like 70% of profit on Airway Medics, but then I decided to repurchase the stock so as to hold it for a longer time. Uh, so uh, anyway, here you can see that uh, what prevails in that history of, uh, of the rate of return is the negative. Uh, so uh, if history from the past is likely to reproduce itself in the future, in the near future, I am very likely to lose money on, the, on, the, on, the, on this one and I am a little bit wary. I wonder if the story from the past will really re re repeat itself in the future. And here comes like the, the last part of the general story I am telling you in this update. I noticed that especially in the Polish biotech and medical sector, uh, there are many companies whose, uh, let's say, financial life, whose life in the stock market, until quite recently, until like January, was like a deep sleep. It is like a collection of sleeping beauties and that coronavirus seems to be like that charming prince who came and serially woke them up with a kiss. Uh, all those uh, companies suddenly like uh, uh, dragged themselves out of very low stock prices, so from very low attractiveness for investors. And suddenly they became a thing uh, uh, that this is one more like this is one more proof for me that this whole COVID-19 crisis whilst it is a crisis on the one hand it is also some kind of like a, uh, like a strong prod with something sharp uh, for the whole economy it pushes us towards an accelerated technological change because uh, that phenomenon of suddenly rising prices in some types of stock in some in, in some industrial sectors it is precisely what Joseph Alois I am sorry Joseph Alois Schumpeter described uh, as the cycle of technological change Anyway, so this is, roughly speaking, the theory and the analytical technique that I am presenting in this update. Once again, uh, if you go to the description box below the video, you will find the link discoversocialsciences.com. You click on the link, it takes you to the website of my blog, Discover Social Sciences, and there you find an update uh, which has the same title as this video and in this update you will find like the fine details of those calculations for which I have pre I have been presenting some graphs in that video. So I wish you a nice reading as usually and I wish you a nice Monday and a nice whole week. Bye.